How to save coins on your next carnival trip. Up next on the Ting's Nice Podcast. Contrary to popular belief, there is no one way or right way to do carnival. If your life is not set up in a way that will allow you to indulge in a 14-day travel experience, living in a lush accommodation as you ride around in a jag, that's okay. As I've said in so many of my podcast episodes, stay true to you. Don't try to keep up with somebody else only to end up worse off than you were before the trip. So in this episode, I'm dropping some tips to help those who desperately need and want to attend Carnival, but may not want to make a hefty investment. Listen up. Tip number one, plan a shorter stay. Clearly, folks usually want to be around for the actual Carnival festivities. That being said, you can work your schedule around those dates. If you only have five days to spare, You have three days that you can work with to get a couple of FETs in, participate in road activities, and then roll out. You may not be able to get any sightseeing done, but you're there for the main event. And that's all that matters. Tip number two, avoid playing mass. (laughs) I know, I know people always give me a hard time when I mention this as a tip, but There is zero denying that skipping the whole costume purchasing process saves you a big chunk of money. Now, typically, the only times that I refrain from playing mass is if I've already gone to a carnival a number of times. Um, I believe that playing mass during a new carnival experience is a must, but that's just my personal preference, right? T-shirt masks is also an option, but those are few and far between these days. Um, They also haven't been as feasible as they used to be back in the day. But let's really think about this. It's not just the costume, right? Once you commit to a costume, you then have to think about how you're going to accessorize tights, boots, jewelry, right? Then the ladies playing masks usually have to... I would not even have to, but usually do um, a book makeup appointments, right? And then you have to arrange transportation to get there if the makeup artist isn't going door to door, right? And you have to spend money and time to get to and from the band house to pick up your costume. I mean, all I'm saying is that it adds up and just think about it. Tip number three, keep a light fet itinerary. Ask yourself these questions. Do I really need to live the FET after FET life? Am I going to show up and be present enough to get my coins worth? How different will one FET be from the other? And what's my motivation for wanting to go? I say, if you're on a strict timeline, make sure that you have a nice mix of FET types. A boat ride, an all-inclusive, a wet or dutty FET. That's a nice little lineup, you know? Tip number four, stay away from lavish accommodations. Let's face the facts. You need a quality place to lay your head down and get ready in between events. You do not need to stay at the Ritz-Carlton if it's not within your means. Water down your lodging expenses by picking a safe place that is within reasonable distance between all of your events one that has pleasant reviews, and one that has a kitchen or a kitchenette, which brings me to my next tip. Tip number five, avoid eating at dine-in restaurants. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat out at all, but be selective, especially if you're no stranger to the destination you're visiting. The more you dine out, the more money that will escape your pockets. If you order out, You don't have to leave a tip. And if the cost of the food is exceptionally reasonable, then order something to consume at a later time if you know that your itinerary is tight, right? So I'm good for ordering five juicy patties at a time when I'm in Jamaica because those can be eaten any time of the day. Pair that sucker with some cream tea 
for breakfast Lord, i set but um <laughs> my team and i we we always make a grocery store run the same day we touch down just to gather some essentials for our stay so these usually include like bread breakfast meats eggs butter tea coffee cream lots of water uh chasers and fruit and be cautious not to buy too much of that thing because the last thing you want is to throw away perfectly good food when you check out of your lodging spot tip number six if you're renting a car rent a car within your means one thing that used to burn my biscuits whenever i traveled to miami carnival was seeing all these hood boogers in flashy cards and in my head i was like yeah okay i want to see how you really living back home you see me like i just want to get from point a to point b in a nice little car that doesn't look broke up and i'm not i'm not trying to impress nobody you heard I'm also not trying to get a car with a big ass gas tank that I have to fill up and island prices be bugging sometimes. And then can we talk about Juve? Yeah. uh Uh-huh. The more basic car, the better because paint, mud, oil, and powder are real things. And all I'm saying is just think twice about it. That's it. Think twice. Tip number seven. Travel with like-minded, money-conscious friends. I did not say cheap. Full disclaimer. Again, like-minded, money-conscious friends is not interchangeable with the word cheap. Cheap group members are almost always not welcomed. All right? Everyone is expected to contribute, and it's a beautiful thing when it happens and no one even has to ask. Make sure that your travel squad is solid. It gets very weird when some people have unlimited monetary resources and others are working on a tight budget, but they're afraid to speak up when decisions are being made, like where to have dinner, which sightseeing activity to go to, or which car to rent. It's awkward. So make sure everybody's on the same page and that the communication has happened about where you are financially in that group. Tip number eight, don't buy so much liquor, but not seriously, (laughs) don't go crazy at the duty-free shops. I have seen far too many unopened liquor bottles get left behind in the Airbnb or hotel because people, them eyes were bigger than their stomach. The arrival excitement is so real when you first touch down, but don't let that take away your sensibility. Think about the types of fets you'll be attending, the length of time in between those events, your luggage condition, and your travel buddies. Are you buying this liquor for yourself or do you expect others to partake? Do y'all even like the same type of liquor? I mean, sure, there may be a sale on a handle, but is that really gonna get finished by the time you leave again all i'm saying is think about it and tip number nine stay your ass at home all right okay yes this last tip might be worse than the one about not playing mass but if you're really tight on coins just just stay home and wait for the next carnival i said what i said it's okay to sit things out just I don't know, stay off social media and block everyone that's going so that they don't contact you. You know? All right, all right. So for the record, these tips are not meant to be used all together. I mean, you can certainly implement most of them at once, but that's definitely not what I'm getting at. I just wanted to provide you with some options that may help you on your next or first carnival adventure so keep everything that we discussed in mind um you know don't buy so much liquor choosing your travel crew wisely and making sure that everybody's on the same page renting a car within your means um avoid eating at dine in restaurants staying away from lavish accommodations uh keeping a fairly light fed itinerary 
I know it's not popular, but avoid playing mass is an option because that can come with some some hefty uh, some hefty coin responsibilities and and you can also just plan a shorter stay. So again, keep that information in mind. If you found this episode to be helpful in any way or entertaining, make sure to give us a lovely rating on Apple podcast and on spotify if you have questions about anything in this episode be sure to hit me up in the comments be sure to dm me on instagram that is where i live mostly so again shout out to you for listening to this episode hope you found it enjoyable until next time